Hey guys, it's JH. Welcome to Practice Tea. Oh. Well, it's 2018 started off. Same as 2017 finished. The weather is just brutal in terms of the wind. Probably 45, 50k straight into us today. What it does, guys, obviously, is um, uh, it's a great tester for your your swing and of course channel lock holds up unbelievably well under the conditions okay guys a couple of things today first off I just want to explain for one of the guys on the channel is it Eric Osberg Eric asked about um, and guys just ask questions if you want I'm happy to answer them. he wasn't quite sure about you know what what the smear was well guys the feeling is that the smear is that that's the, the feeling of it it's not quite as pronounced as that in actuality but you need to feel that you need to feel that to counteract um, the club face wanting to stay open in the downswing you've got to feel like you're smearing it square to closed you want to feel that impact that it's a little bit shut like that post impact that it's it's more shut or smeared down but in actual fact it's not I mean I mean a proper release is straight line I call this a Colt 45 release if you had a gun in your hand Colt 45 38 or Magnum 44 guys if you had it up here and you're going to fire the Magnum from here there, there it is. That's how, the, from back here, from our hinge position, we just go there. It's an ulnar deviation. There. That, that's the thumbprint. But in doing that, the smear is in it. it. It's sort of a fire down, like that, but there's a smear in it at the same time. And there's a thumbprint in it. If you can just think of that action on your downswing, if you can actually get from here and fire, fire that, that, bang, like that. Because, because that straight line, the good thing about that, that is straight out to the golf ball. So the smear, whereas it feels like that, in actuality it'll be what I feel guys is I feel to keep the integrity and the club contained coming into impact and this is really technical stuff and I didn't want to sort of you know burden you guys with super technicalities of feel but what I do is as I come in my, my lead hand my lead hand believe it or not actually smears this way as a feeling it smears this way it goes clockwise against an anti-clockwise trail hand and what happens guys because I get that pressure doing this it contains the golf club the golf club can't get away that's the locking containment mechanism it just cannot get away from there because the forces are doing this so the Y is maintained that's the great thing about it it's that sort of pressure but that's what I do now that's a very very That, that's a very, very, you know, high-level, technical, um, anatomical, biomechanical process. There's no question in my mind that Hogan did that. And that's how he got that amazing integrity coming down. Okay, th this was bowing here because he was throwing away the cup from the top of the swing. And he, w and he was doing this. But this, this forearm was moving this way. And that is real containment. That's that's atomic particle type containment. But do you need to do that? I do it, but I've always done it. Because I've always taken the golf club back like that. I've always taken the golf club back looking at the golf ball. So I've always had that that sort of what I call a splaying effect. I get, you know, the forearms splaying themselves into each other. 
but that is real containment guys you can really you know if you do that as a feeling it's just amazing containment you really can contain the club I mean and, and and to get the feeling just do a couple of little knockdown shots like that where you're really coming in and and you're splaying it like that see how that's there that's that's really is I actually feel like I'm firing the release that way and, and that's part of the direction that we want for for the straight line attack on the golf ball see guys it's still here and as Bill Phillips uh, an MMI golf said on his website you know when you've contained the club when it doesn't get outside that lead forearm. You'll know you've got it contained when you finish your golf swing and it's still in line with that lead forearm. So so for Eric, yeah, yeah, the smear is not sort of a rolling smear, it's sort of a pressure down smear. More a squash than a smear really. Probably a squash. Steve Elkington talks about a squash action. Martin Ayres talks about squashing it. Now, if you had a sort of a you know peeled orange you just wanted to squash it yes. okay you've got to turn your hand a little bit to do that and that's the intention because that just squares up that club face that's wanting to get away most of the time in the downswing because golf clubs are designed like that guys golf clubs are designed to do that believe it or not people say play with the instrument the way it's designed if you play with it the way it's designed you'd never hit the ball on the golf course because it's designed to do that that's what's it's the worst designed bit of gear in the world. It's designed to do that. Now, if it was designed to stay there and perfectly balanced, it'd be fantastic. So you never want to play with with the way the club's designed or the tool's designed because that's the way it's designed. It's designed to come open. So you have to counteract that force. And guys, that's why for me, from the top of the swing, I get it going early. I'm always trying to shut the club down as a feeling from the top of the swing I'm really trying to trap it early when I get it here I actually feel like that which is that that ice cream scoop or, or Bill Phillips's you know cheese slice I, I feel that I feel that happening there because I know if I don't do that that the club face will stay open when I hit it so I get it going really really early so you guys are still here there. But the feeling is the club's going there. Toe down. Yeah. Very much toe down. Absolutely. If you want to think toe down, hit it with toe down because it does feel like toe down. When, when you do it correctly, it feels like that. Really feels like toe down. See, it's still here, guys. Look still there okay there'll be times when you want to hit a, a specialty shot you want to hit a knockdown or something like that well you wouldn't be doing that you'd be getting the club over here although I don't I actually roll it like that I still keep it in line we're not talking about um, shot making here but if I want to hit a knockdown shot into this wind I don't do it like that I don't slap it over there I do it like that. Now that's gone very low and very straight. Because the problem you have, if if you if you roll slap it um, and you get the slightest bit outside and you get a bit over slappy, then the ball's going to go left to left. I mean, if I want to hit it around a corner, I mean, if I want to really hit a snap trap shot around a corner, that's precisely what I do. That's where I finish here, look. But that's shot making, guys. We don't want to go there. So anyway, I hope I've cleared up that smear. The smear is that. And, and the more you... Actually, a squash. If you can actually try and squash. As you come in, just think you're going to squash an orange. And because the wind is the way it is, guys, I've 
had to come over here and hide behind the bushes because it blows the camera over today. Now what am I working on myself? I'm working on the, the ready code, the pause ready code. And also another thing guys that I'm working on is I want to feel in the backswing that the club actually does that. It just tips itself down before I start the downswing. If I can get that, I really time it and I really hammer it. It's actually probably a little bit of a drop load. Um, that'll, that'll, that'll always be relative to you know, how you're holding the club, how much in the fingers you hold it. If you hold it in the palm, that won't happen. But if you're someone that holds it in the roots of the fingers and, and you've got that nice finger grip on it, you can do that. So, yeah, I'm working on a little bit of pause, a little bit of the Pepsi swing. And Bill Phillips was talking about, see guys, these are just revision tapes for you now. And, and just, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Wow. Wind is so strong, it blows everything over. I've got the camera hiding under a tree there. I hope it doesn't blow it over. Uh, probably 60 k's now. I guess that's why I'm a good wind player. Yeah, Bill Phillips was saying, and it's taken Bill probably up until now. Uh, this is not easy, guys. Channel lock's different than any other golf swing, and of course the setup is so different. I mean, but Bill is saying now, and he understands now, that you have to have this alignment here, so you can take it back here. We don't want any of this. We want to have a straight line situation. So basically, trying to to get the shaft you know, perpendicular, get some arch in the wrist and try and get the club in line with the trail arm. I don't get it totally in line with the trail arm, I get a little bit of angle on it. Um, but, you know, really, you've got to be here. Now, no other golf swing in the world sets up like this guy. And you'll know you're doing channel lock when you look like that. If you don't look like that, you're not really doing channel lock. Um, and you don't have to do channel lock perfect you know uh, 10 out of 10 you can do channel lock variation 6 or 7 out of 10 as long as we get the basic tenants and the premise of the golf swing which is swinging beside ourselves with our shoulders closed as long as we can do that we got it so uh, yeah uh, so important guys this 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 back and and if you can actually hit some shots sometimes where you actually play the ball back crazy back. That'll actually overdo it for you. Okay, you really got to stay still when you play it from back there because if you move forward the slightest bit, you ain't never going to get the golf club on the ball. Not ever, never. So so there's good discipline, a good discipline a process. If you can play it right back there. I'll tell you what's interesting, guys, when you do that, for me... I get a lot of squash on the ball. Well, clearly, because the ball is further back, so you should be in a strong position when you hit it. But you've only got to move a tiny little bit. And it's, uh, for a right-hander, it's four and a right. But that is a nice feeling. And really, when you do that, guys, the good thing about that is you will feel, you know when Mr. Mr. X says about don't hit the ball till you're ready, feel you're in balance to hit the shot. Now, when I play it back there, this is, very, this, is, this is really good. When I play it back here, I've got an entirely different balance factor. And I know that that balance factor must stay there. Because if that balance factor moves here from that trail axis into here, I'm, ne I'm just not going to be able to, to, to release the club correctly. Yeah, so, so play a couple from back there. It's a perfect shot. Now, it's very hard to pause, guys, when it's windy. Because when you get back, the wind's blowing on you and you think you're going to get blown over. Because the wind is substantial. Absolutely substantial. But I'll try and do a better job with the pause.
there's actually no pause there containment pause what happens sometimes when I do get a bit of pause I get a lot of a lot of download and I get a lot of jam on it a lot of jam on the shot because I'm a sweeper I'm not, I'm not a I don't try and squeeze the ball into the ground but sometimes with these softer shafts when I pause I get a lot of a lot of squeeze I like to hit it like that I, I, I just like to sweep it come on James pause It's killer time there. Okay, that's not uh, that's not poor city, but um, and I, I'm not I'm not not using the uh, the wind as an excuse, guys. Um, but but it is difficult. I, I find as I go back, it just tends to blow on me. It's really blowing now. But I'll try and try and pause. Containment. So even if I got that amount, that'd do. That's not really a pause, but what it is is a really good transition. It's not a jerky transition. It's a nice transition. Now, if I if I could get that all the time, I'd be happy with that. And with my personality and my biology. Uh, I'm always going to be quick so it's so out of character for me to try and actually swing slowly and come to a stop but if I can slow down a bit a lot of containment and the great thing about channel like guys is in the wind is you don't get a lot of side spin on the shot so the wind really has no effect on it it's just the wind with the friction into it is going to, you're never going to hit the ball as far into the wind as, as you will with no wind. Um, but, uh, but you don't get side spin, so you don't get, like, like it's coming straight into us here and cross. So, but, but none of those balls are moving, they're not, they're not going away. I mean, they're just getting, they're just holding their line. Okay, see if we can, see if we can pause. I mean, that, that, that for me would do me. It's not, it's not, you couldn't, you know, in the dictionary, there would never be a, a video of that swing. Well, why would you put a video in a dictionary, you idiot? But you know what I mean, guys. I mean, a pause is a pause. Pause means you come to a stop. Picture of a video in a dictionary. I told you the Australians destroy the English language picture of a video in a dictionary. Okay, come on James. See you can get the brain working. Contain it. Guys, that'll do me. Whatever that is, I'm happy with it. Whatever that is, I'm happy with it. Now the good thing about that is that there's not a lot going on there. All I've got is my, my basic protocol, which is down pretty close to pat where I want it now and I know what it is so I can set it up and it's here and I've got this perpendicularity here now from here it's just containing here and pressure down and uh, and just try and get the pause don't need anything else It's, you'll never hit the ball crooked guys, you won't hit the ball crooked with, with channel lock. Alright, now I'll focus here for a shot, and what happens is, of course when you're on camera, you're hitting shots and you're talking it, and there's no real focus for, for playing a shot. Now there's two signs out here about 10 yards apart. I've got five on here, and the wind is coming across, so I'm going to try and knock it in between those two signs, but I'm going to think about the shot, and, and have a golf course orientation for the shot. 
I'm not thinking about, I, once, I, once I get my orientation here, see the target, I then don't think I want to hit to the target, I, I want to hit to the golf ball. But I know where I want to go. I know where I want to go, now I'm just going to hit towards the, the golf ball. Now there it is guys, right between the signs. Now that swing's abbreviated, and all the swings today will be abbreviated because it's windy. And it's just blowing on me. But that's right between those two signs because I had golf course orientation. And my whole process, guys, I see the target, I know where it is, and the target actually conditions and produces my stance. There. It does all that, and that all happens, and then after I'm in that position, the stance, I just think of the golf ball. I think about anything else. I think about the target, and I think about the golf ball. Now, someone asked me, or mentioned that, you know, on, on short shots when I'm pitching, my feet are open, and, and, and asked me, if, Jay, do you open your feet more? Guys, I have no idea what I do with my feet. I only use my feet for balance. I'm not conscious of them being open or closed. Wherever they are, they are. But I always have this aspect of my golf swing. I'm always starting from here, and then my feet, my foot or foot line just comes up for balance. Don't get any better than that, guys. And if that was... We were aiming at a target there, we'd be inside, you know, six or eight feet there. That's just, that's just bullet time right there. Absolute bullet time. And it's really windy. I just hit a couple of uh, drivers. There's my, my idol Sevi Biosterus would say, we hit the driver. And we'll hit some shots with the driver. And Jerry, Seve was unbelievable. Nobody had the charisma that Seve had. Nobody. Nobody. Seve was unique in the world of golf. Okay, guys, watch this. Now, I'm really going to smear this. I'm going to... I mean, that's a fantastic shot into the wind. Okay, smooth it, Chase. Come on, contain it. Just fantastic. Okay, they're quick. Okay. Don't be quick with the driver. That's what you got to do. Contain it. Okay, they're quick golf swings. Be a lot of smear on this. Okay. I'm going to swing. I'm going to pause. Now I didn't pause. See how shallow I am guys? I don't take the tee out of the ground. That's because the swing is shallow. Come on Jase. Contain it. Yeah, the machine gun. Like, but every one of those is between those signs. Okay, I'll show you something at the end of this shot.
club still here. Now into that wind, you'd be trying to knock the driver down. And, and so you'd be tending to do that. But I don't, I do that. So you probably saw that little Zorro type act. I actually do that when I want to knock it down. I just go here. I don't... Um, They're all inside the markers. And guys, you really do uh, save on tees. Containment. Okay, they're quick swings, but the wind is really it's just so hard to swing slow in the wind. Okay, there's no wind, Jones. Tell yourself there's no wind. That's a better job. Every one of those drivers between those two sides. That's a bullet. Whoa, is that a bullet? Now I'm entirely different to to Billy Phillips in that for him the Kill Bill is fantastic. But be, for me, my whole life I've always had an ignition move instantaneously I get over the golf ball. And that's in my makeup. I've always done that. That's just in my makeup. So I'm always going to ignite the golf swing very quickly. But it's always the same rate of igniting. That's the good thing about it. Hammer time right there. I can have a little bit more smear. And what's happening is I'm firing my weight down my right side today and I'm getting a lot of drive out of the ground as a result of this. So that's why that trail foot's driving, but it's driving at impact and then it's releasing. I'll just keep it down a little bit. Wow, that's good. What happens when I, what's the shape of the shot I get when I keep it down? Really, really power, power draw, but only a little one. But it really, because I feel like this happens, I feel like I'm there. Really a lot of five o'clock nose. Every one of those shots on the fairway, I mean every one. And we've still got the same tee. My last shot. As soon as you say, still got the same tee, probably knock the tee out. Okay. Smooth it, Jay. Smooth. What did I tell you? That's a great shot. But see, knock the tee out. As soon as you, as soon as you think about the tee. Okay, guys, there's just a couple of bits and pieces today that might help you. Um, yeah, very tough to practice in the wind like this. Worry about the camera blowing over and everything else. But just a couple of points there. Remember, you can actually fire it. Just get a pitching wedge. Fire it like that. Fire it at the ball and tangentially here there's our thumbprint here there it is see there that's the way to learn it guys that's the way to learn firing now that's that I'm really trying to 
fingerprint that ball or thumbprint that ball. So there it is. Not over there. And as I've said many times before guys, the way to learn this golf swing is baby steps. All these little intricate bits, just baby steps. Okay James, keep that trail leg bent a little bit. Containment. It's a beautiful shot that. Woo. Okay guys, just a few things. Looks like the big storm's coming in. Okay guys. Let's say, if you've got any questions, put them on the channel. And I'll answer them uh, uh, with videos. In the videos.